When you make an image bigger, you can, you can do a number of things to fill in the gap. So let's go back for a second. So I have this image of the puppy and I, for some reason, it cannot be bigger than five by seven, but I wanted to make the image six by eight, right? So when I do that, I have an image at six by eight now, but I have a white border around the outside. And so there's lots of things that I could do to keep my document the size that I need it for whatever my project is. Maybe I'm putting it in a picture frame and the picture frame is six by eight, which I don't actually think it's a standard picture frame size. So pretend it's like six by nine because that's a standard picture frame size. Um, you have some options. So you can not use the image if it doesn't have enough pixels. Let's say that you need that image to be the picture of a dog and it has to go all the way to the outside of the image and you just decide there are not enough pixels. You did the image, image size dialog box. It doesn't meet the requirements. You could upsample the image so that new pixels are created to meet the pixel requirements. And so in this case, you're going from 5 by 7 to 6 by 8. It may not be the end of the world. You just need a few extra pixels um, here and there. And so you could try to upsample it. You could try to make it bigger um, by cropping it to the bigger size. Keeping in mind, you don't want to do that if you're going from like 4 by 5 to 8 by 10. You're doubling the size of the image. That's a bad idea. But if you're only going up half an inch or something, maybe that's an option. Um, the third option is to find another way to make it bigger. Maybe you combine multiple image and images and make a collage. And so each individual image is not big enough to fill up that 6 by 8 inch page. But if you combine multiple images, you can still fill up the whole page. But now it's a, a dog collage instead of just one picture. You could also create um, or paint original artwork. And so you could make the image bigger. Maybe it doesn't have enough pixels, but then you could paint over it and it could be a painted image. You could use a border. Maybe for this image, instead of making the dog bigger, you create a decorative border on the outside. Or what I'm going to talk about right now is using the idea of content aware fill. And this isn't specifically covered in your textbook, but it's something I think is kind of cool. And I think it's kind of an easy transition into playing around in Photoshop. And so I'd like to show you a couple things in regard to the content aware fill. Um, the first is that there are some basic steps for using content aware fill, and there are some basic reasons too. So, content aware fill is a newer Photoshop feature that attempts to create new content that matches or aligns to existing content. It can be used to replace unwanted, uh, an unwanted object in an image. So, maybe you have a field and there's a cow in the middle of the field, but you don't want the cow to be there, you could replace the cow. Um, it can also be used to develop content for empty areas. And so our example here, we have an empty background and we want to fill it in with maybe some gray background for the texture. And so I'm not going to show you the little, I want to call it a husky, but I know it's not a husky because it's Whitney's dog and it's a very specific uh, type of dog. But I don't have a husky image with me, so I am going to show you my own image. But what you can do is you can fill in that background with content aware. The basic steps that we're going to follow are to create a selection of the area that you wish to fill and you want to make it a little bit bigger than the area that you want to fill because it kind of borrows pixels from around it. With the selection active, choose edit and fill and you could choose like to fill it with a color if you're making a border, but you can also change the contents option to be content aware and then select OK and then Photoshop will work its magic and it will try to figure out what should fill that area and it will replace the existing content with the new content. And so I'm going to show you how to do it with this image here. And so I have this image of some flowers, some random flowers, and I would like to make it bigger. And so I did the same process that we did with the Husky. I did image canvas size. I made the canvas bigger. Maybe it was five by seven. I wanted it to be six by nine, whatever it happens to be. And now I'm stuck with a white border around all sides of my image. And so I could do one of those things we talked about. I could add a border. I could, you know, use multiple images. But I want to try to fill in the gap using the content aware fill. And so to do that, I made a selection of the outside of the border. And in the next video, I will actually demo this in Photoshop. So for now, just take notes. And so I, I made a selection of the active area. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit bigger than, than the white border. So I actually went to the select menu and chose to expand my selection just a little bit so it overlapped. Uh, once the selection was active, I went to the edit menu and chose fill and, excuse me, in the fill dialog box, I changed the contents to be content aware and selected OK. Now, there are many more settings you could choose for content aware. And when we actually cover this in our lessons, then we'll go into more detail. But for now, that'll work for our needs. And so when I do this, it will kind of 
take a minute or two and it will process and it will give me a new image. And so you can see from the image with the white border on the left hand side here, Photoshop filled in all of the gaps in the image. And so now I have an image that's the size I need it. And at the bottom here, I think it did a pretty good job. Like you can't really tell where the image started and stopped. But the top here, it did something weird. So in the original image, it had trees back here. And maybe I shouldn't have selected that area. Maybe I should have selected a bigger area so that the trees would be replaced automatically. But I didn't. And so I can look at it and say, well, this stuff worked out pretty well down here. I need to redo the content aware for this band. I don't like the way it looks. It's not, I just want a texture of flowers. I don't want to see the grass or the trees or anything. And so what I did was I, I made a selection of the area that didn't work out so well. And I repeated um, edit fill content aware over and over again until I got something more like what I wanted. And so you can see it kind of repeats patterns. Um, and it, maybe it doesn't work for what you're wanting it to work for, but this pattern worked well for what I was trying to make. I kind of like the pattern to it, and I think it works for, you know, using as, as a background image on a template or something like that. And so I repeated this process over and over again until I got an image that I, I, I liked. So Content Aware Fill doesn't work all the time, and it doesn't work the first time all the time, but you could try it a couple times, and it could create something that, that you're looking for. And so. In this last example here, you can see where the original page size was. And so I was able to make the image bigger. It has more pixels now than it was before. And now I could print it at the size that I wanted to print it or display it, depending on how big the image was for display. Before I jump to the next video where we're going to demo how to do this, I want to show you another example of how Content Aware Fill could be used. And so I have this image here, just a random sign somewhere. And maybe for part of my project, I want to replace the words that are in German that I don't know what they say. And I want to put the name of, of my business or my project or something on it. So I need to get rid of the German words so that I can then use the type tool and add type in front of it. We're going to do the same process. So you're going to make a selection, but this time, instead of trying to fill an area that has a void, we're going to try to get it to erase an area of unwanted artwork, right? And so you're going to make a rough selection of the area that you want to replace and choose Edit Fill, Edit Fill, Content Aware. And in theory, when I do this, it will not have any white here and it will just be wood grain. But it doesn't always work the first time you do it. And so the first result that I have with the big selection is that it looked at neighboring pixels and it said, ah, oh, you've got a hole in the in the, the board here, you must want to repeat that, right? It's part of the, the pattern of the shape that you're looking at. Well, I don't want to do that, but I know that if I repeat, if I undo and I repeat it over and over again, I'm probably going to get a similar result. So what I did was I just made a smaller selection of the area that didn't work out so well. So I made a smaller selection of this open window that never existed but exists now, and I repeated the process. I chose edit, fill, content aware, and then just in two steps I was able to create uh, a board here that doesn't have the text on it that now I could take and I could modify further. I could paint on it with a paintbrush or I could use a type tool and I could add my own text or I could just take a logo out of something that I want to use for a project but I didn't want to look like I was promoting you know Pepsi over Coke or something like that. So the next video we will jump to Photoshop and I'll show you how to do this as a hands-on practice.